the public hearing on the superintendent's uh, fiscal year 2019 budget, and we will begin with the pledge. Here we go. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, uh, let's see. Two weeks ago, the superintendent and Ms. McCorp presented our recommended budget for the fiscal, I guess it's 2020 school year. Yes. Sorry, it's a typo on my agenda here. Um, so it's been open for public comment, if anyone can still send an email, and then this is the public's opportunity to make their um, thoughts views and thoughts known, I guess is the best way to say that. So uh, if you haven't signed up, I think this, the sheet, either Kathy has pulled it or it's up here. You still have the last chance to sign up to speak. Keep in mind you're limited to three minutes. And then we will kick it off now to Dr. Smith. Good evening. <laughs> to my close friends. Um, I want to go through just a couple of slides. This is not new information about the budget. It's just presenting it in a little bit different way to help everybody understand um, the sums that we're asking for and kind of how it breaks out a little bit by category. Uh, the big picture has not changed from what we presented on January 30th. Our budget we are seeking and putting forth to you for recommendation is about $224.5 million. It's $10.3 million then requested and operationalized last year. We know that we have about three and uh, three point seven million dollars right now from state, federal, and other sources. We still then have a deficit to make the budget work of about six point seven million dollars, and that request, that money, can come from really only local sources, the county commissioners. Another way of looking at it is in a pie chart. Um, there are three basic categories of this additional $10 million. The largest part of that puzzle or that pie piece is funding the negotiated agreement, the last year of a four-year negotiated agreement, a fantastically put together negotiated agreement that is built on collaboration and compromise, but it comes at a cost. On top of that, there are also incremental costs for any operation, any business, anybody moving forward. Things cost a little more each year. The second category, the red pie slice, is uh, unfunded mandates. And a lot of unfunded mandates have been handed down every year over the past several years. The most um, expensive relate to uh, safety, security, and mental health of students, specifically 1265. We are very supportive of a great deal that is comprised in that bill and look forward to the legislative session and how they're working forward from it. But money was not attached to it. Grand ideas without funding are grand ideas. The last is uh, we go through, there are recommended enhancements to SMCPS every single year. We want to talk a little bit more about how we can better serve all of our students. So let's take a little closer look at those puzzle pieces. The first one, that big puzzle piece, that's the negotiated agreement. And it's a bit of an eye chart. But health insurance, if it goes up by 5%, which is a modest increase, but that's predicated on our past several years and the wonderful work that we do with our uh, staff to, to make sure that we're making really good health care choices, uh, that's $1.5 million. For utilities, utilities go up every year, about $400,000 to cover the incremental increases to utilities. Bus contracts and fuel uh, are going up about six, uh, about $600,000, and, and that is a small increase to uh, the funding to also go towards the paying of, uh, of, of, of staff. Um, and then the last, the biggest piece is that step COLA and fixed charges um, that we have in the negotiated agreement, and that's about $5.4 million. Now the good news is we have state funds, so we have enough money to cover all of the operating costs, plus health insurance, plus utilities, plus the bus contractors, but when we get to that step, we do not have enough money. And so at that point, we are immediately, we have a shortfall where we need about 4.4, 4.5 million dollars. So no matter what, we need about 4.5 million dollars in additional funds to make the negotiated agreements 
meet the negotiated agreements and cover incremental costs. That's the big puzzle piece, but there is still more. The second portion of this is the mandates for safety and behavioral and mental health. That is psychologists and counselors and teachers and security staff and technology staff to make sure that the security, all of that works. All of that together, and we've presented it in several different fashions, that costs another $1.5 million. At this point now, we are running a $5.7 million deficit. So we need about $5.7 million to meet the negotiated agreement and the safety and mental health mandates that come down from the state. And then the final piece of the puzzle is recommended enhancements. Uh, that's one special education IEP chair to, speci to specifically take a look at one of our schools. It has about 800 kids in it. It's two general education teachers. It's a nurse. It's reclassifications of staff. And it's the intern program that we spoke about where we are giving summer opportunities to our students to have their very first job and experience within St. Mary's County Public Schools. And that equates to about $800,000. And with those three puzzle pieces together, that means that we're looking at about $6.7 million that we, don't, that we don't currently have, that we would have to have from local sources. That perhaps is the easiest way to break it down to take a look at where we are with the budget. With that being said, given the input this evening, we will go forward on the 20th. We will have another budget work session. We will make the final modifications and get any guidance from you as to what you would like to see included, excluded, and modified. Uh, then that comes to us on the 27th for finalization. Once it's finalized, then it goes over to the county commissioners for them to slot into their actual budget conversations and considerations. And so with that, that's all I have. Okay, okay so uh, one last call for anyone who's signing in. Uh, please keep in mind that we do not respond to questions. We just take your comments and anything that you say into account and um, you at the, during the budget work session that we'll have next week um, then if you have anything that's written if you leave it with Kathy then she can give it to us we can put it in our budget books and then also refer back to that during the work session next Wednesday uh, you have three minutes to speak Kathy will be timing you Kathy Mancini not Kathy Allen um, so if you once you hear the beeper go off if you aren't done just kind of wrap it up and and uh, we will thank you very kindly for your words so and with that, we can call the first speaker. The first speaker is Jill Morris from East End. Good evening, Superintendent Smith and Board of Education. By now, you know me. I'm Jill Morris. I am the Education Association of St. Mary's County President, serving in my second year of a three-year term. And last year, you might remember, it was a little different in the room. There were a lot more people here. We, we had a lot more people come out, and we had a positive tone, and we talked about all the positions, and we, we packed the room. It was, we went out into the hallway. And I am elected by members, so I don't want you to think something has gone terribly wrong uh, by us not having the room packed tonight. But what my members want me to come and say to you tonight, very sincerely, is thank you and um, and I have a grateful heart for the kind of relationship I have with our Board of Education our superintendent and our cabinet many of them are sitting here tonight I am grateful that we can have hard conversations and I am grateful that when I see the superintendents proposed budget every year it's about people which means it's about relationships, which means it's our kids are gonna win. Because we are all here, make no doubt about it, we are all here for the kids. And so I, I don't really have a lot to whip up or, or be dramatic about. I'm not promising that won't be in April, <laughs> but y'all be there with me. Uh, we're, we're on this walk together is how I feel. And I just wanted to come and thank you and thank you for your thoughtfulness and your commitment in honoring our negotiated agreement so i just that's about all i have to say all right so thank you so much thank you
The next speaker is Caitlin Spedden. Good evening. Um, my name is Caitlin Spedden. I am a high school teacher with SMCPS. Um, a couple of other teachers wanted me to come to speak tonight about the baby talk uh, consolidation over at Great Mills. Our biggest two points is one reason we know teen pregnancy has been down this year, but it is always likely to change. We already have pregnant teens at Chopticon, and one of them has said if she is asked to go to Great Mills to make use of the program at Brit there, she will drop out. And likely other students will follow suit if it happens to them, and that would not bode well for our very wonderful graduation rate that we've worked very hard to keep set at. Uh, the next thing is the center really allows for teachers to be much more successful at their jobs. Uh, I myself have used the center, and Maryland policy states that if a child is sick, if they get a fever, they have to be picked up within an hour. We know that kids under two get sick very, very often. Um, if a daycare is further away, as a teacher, I have to get a phone call, disrupts my classroom, and I have to leave immediately, leaving probably not the best sub plans behind. If when, she's, when my daughter's down the hall, my classroom doesn't have to be disrupted, I get a knock on my door. Usually I even just get an email that says, hey, she's sick, come pick her up when you get a chance, you get your one hour, and that's it. I get to finish the class I'm in, and I get to take the time to develop lesson plans that actually fit with what's going on that day and in whatever unit plan I'm working with. I can take my time, other teachers can take my time, help out by covering, and I can just walk down there and pick her up and go. Also, if you look at other tuitions for two year, under two-year-olds, you could even raise the tuition by $50 for this program every week and it is still significantly cheaper than any other option. So teachers can benefit from it still being cheaper, but you would be, end up getting more money. I know there's no profit for baby talk, but any little bit always helps. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I do not have anyone else signed up this evening. Okay. Anyone else? Last call? I said four. All right, so I'm supposed to make final comments here <laughs> and a thank you. Um, all right, so thank everyone. I would like to thank everyone for who did speak. Uh, keep in mind, if you do have any individuals that you know of, they can still submit their written comments to the Board of Education um, up until the time that we vote on it. I get fever. <laughs> My time is up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even if someone couldn't make it out tonight, please encourage them to um, write. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything formal. It can be an email, um, not a Facebook post. Don't message anyone, but uh, email is best. So thank you very much. And um, we will have the work session next week, and that's open as well. And that will start somewhere between 9 and 9.15. So, all right. Just say 9.15. Yeah, we could just say 9.15 because then I have to make